Hi, and welcome. I will give you an introduction on estimation, and the difference between hypothesis testing and estimation. In estimation, we use the sample statistics obtained from sample as estimates of the population parameters. There are two types of estimates. Point estimates, and interval estimates. How can we get a point estimate for the population mean weight of adults? We have to draw a random sample of adults from the population. Weight each adult in the sample. Compute the sample mean and use it as an estimate for the population mean weight of adults. This is a point estimate. What is the probability that population mean weight of adults is exactly equal to the sample mean? It is not possible to put a probability or confidence level to it. But it is very slim. However, with interval estimate, which is also called confidence interval, we can say with probability or confidence level that the interval will contain the population mean. The wider the interval, the higher the probability, or the more confident we are, that the interval will contain the population mean. There are three types of confidence interval. Left-tailed, right-tailed, and two-tailed confidence intervals. Just keep in mind that when we do a right-tailed hypothesis test, we will have to estimate a left-tailed confidence interval. When we do a left-tailed hypothesis test, we will estimate a right-tailed confidence interval. And when we do a two-tailed hypothesis test, we estimate a two-tailed confidence interval. To estimate the confidence interval, we first have to compute the margin of error, which is denoted by E. The formula to compute the margin of error is critical value times standard error. If the population standard deviation is known, we will use Z critical as the critical value, and use the population standard deviation to compute the standard error. Z critical depends on level of confidence and the type of test, whether it is one-tailed or two-tailed test. If the population standard deviation is unknown, we will use the sample standard deviation as point estimate for the population standard deviation, and use t-critical as the critical value. t-critical depends on level of confidence, type of test, and also sample size, n, to determine the degrees of freedom. For example, given, sample size, n, is 25, population standard deviation is 10 kg. Since population standard deviation is known, we will use Z-critical as the critical value instead of T-critical. However, if population standard deviation is unknown, we will use T-critical with N-1, or 24, degrees of freedom as the critical value. The standard error is 10 kg, divided by square root 25, giving a standard error of 2 kg. If we are doing a one-tailed interval at 95% confidence level, the critical value, Z-critical, is 1.645. The margin of error, E, will be 1.645 time 2, equal to 3.29 kg. If we are doing a two-tailed interval at 95% confidence level, Z-critical would be 1.960. The margin of error will be 1.960 time 2, equal to 3.92 kg. Let us look at a case where we are doing a right-tailed hypothesis test at alpha equal to 5%. We have to estimate a 95% left-tailed confidence interval. A left-tailed interval has a lower bound, that is, a lower limit, but no upper limit. Assuming the sample mean computed from the sample of 25 adults is 73.5 kg. The peak of the confidence interval is at the sample mean, 73.5 kg. The lower bound is given by sample mean, minus margin of error, and this is the margin of error. We say the population mean is greater than or equal to the lower bound, that is, greater than or equal to the sample mean, minus the margin of error. The margin of error for one tailed interval, at 95% confidence level, was earlier found to be 3.29 kg. The 95% left-tailed confidence interval says that the population mean is greater than, or equal to 73.5, minus 3.29, equal to 70.21 kg. That is, 
the population mean can be any value greater than or equal to 70.21 kg. In my video on hypothesis testing, I have introduced two methods to make conclusion. The critical region and test statistic method, and the p-value and alpha method. I will show you a third method to make conclusion using confidence interval and the mean stated in the null hypothesis. In this third method, if the confidence interval does not contain the mean stated in the null hypothesis, we will reject the null hypothesis. Since the population mean can be any value greater than or equal to 70.21 kg, and this interval does not contain the 70 kg stated in the null hypothesis, we will reject the null hypothesis. This conclusion is the same as what we obtained in the hypothesis test. For a left-tailed hypothesis test at alpha equal to 5%, we have to estimate a 95% right-tailed confidence interval, which has an upper bound, that is, an upper limit, but no lower limit. The peak of the confidence interval is at the sample mean, 73.5 kg. The upper bound is given by sample mean, plus margin of error and this is the margin of error. We say the population mean is less than or equal to the upper bound, that is, less than or equal to the sample mean, plus the margin of error. The population mean can be any value less than or equal to 76.79 kg. Since the population mean can be any value less than or equal to 76.79 kg, and this contains the 70 kg stated in the null hypothesis, we will accept the null hypothesis. This conclusion is again the same as what we obtained in the hypothesis test. Finally, for a two-tailed hypothesis test at alpha equal to 5%, we have to estimate a 95% two-tailed confidence interval, which has both lower and upper bounds, that is, a lower and upper limits. The peak of the confidence interval is at the sample mean, 73.5 kg. The upper bound and lower bounds are given by sample mean, plus minus margin of error. With a sample mean of 73.5 kg, and the margin of error for two-tailed interval was earlier found to be 3.92 kg. The population mean can be any value between 69.58 and 77.42 kg. Since the interval contains the 70 kg stated in the null hypothesis, we will accept the null hypothesis. This conclusion is the same as what we obtained in the hypothesis test. So what is the difference between hypothesis testing and estimation? In hypothesis testing, we assume the population mean stated in the null hypothesis is true. We do not make this assumption in estimation. Instead, in estimation, we assume the population mean is unknown. Coming back to hypothesis testing, and using the same example that the mean weight of adults is still 70 kg. We assume that the population mean weight of adults is really 70 kg. Using an alpha of 5% and two-tailed test, the sample mean of a sample drawn from the population has a 95% chance of falling into the accept null hypothesis region. If this happens, we conclude that the population mean weight of adults is 70 kg, still the same, no change even though the sample mean may not be 70 kg, but near to it. There is a 95% chance of this happening. Otherwise, we conclude that the population mean weight of adults is no longer 70 kg. It has changed. There is a 5% chance of this happening. An estimate of the confidence interval will be meaningful to see the magnitude of the change in this case. The interval will definitely not contain 70 kg, as was explained in the earlier slides. As mentioned before, in estimation, we assume the population mean is unknown. But we know that the sample mean of a sample drawn from the population has a 95% chance of falling between the 95% two-tailed confidence interval about the unknown population mean. If this happens, and we estimate a 95% two-tailed confidence interval, but this time, about the sample mean, the interval will definitely contain the unknown population mean. Otherwise, the 95% two-tailed confidence interval about the sample mean will not contain the unknown population mean. With an interval estimate, 
we can say there is a 95% chance that the 95% confidence interval contains the population mean. With a point estimate, we are unable to put a confidence level to it. Thank you for watching the video.